All right, so I am here with Senior Gigio. What's up? How y'all doing? Peace hey, man. Jim. We're doing good, man. How are you doing? I'm fantastic, man. I just want to say congratulations. You are a Bay Area hip hop artist, a multi talented, multitasking artist who has done so many things. And today, 22nd of April 2022, Friday, you put out two different things a comic book and an album. Yes. So here's the uh, comic book here. Super Psychic Kitty meets the Mummified Pharaoh, and this sort of goes hand in hand with your album, which is Funk Lore by Senior Gigio. And uh, here it is here in the Digipack CD. And if you look closely, you'll see about the author, which is Senior Gigio, is a prolific MC, cartoonist, animator, comic book writer, illustrator. Music video director, editor, tarot card reader, psychic, healer, husband, and father. His uh, son turned one year old recently. Based in the San Francisco Bay Area in the East Bay. And then you got this new album out, which is what, 18 tracks and all? 19 tracks. 19 tracks. And then we got here the, the comic book. And this is not the first one you've done because I also have this from, how many years ago was this uh, one? 2018, out? put that out. 2018, nice yeah. one, nice. So anyway, so tell us here about this and doing the music and doing the illustration as a graphic artist. How did the two sort of tie in with one another as a hip hop artist? Uh, well, I'm very, you know, visual in my music and it starts with, everything starts with the music, but you know, I have a vision for everything. And just by, um, I guess, by necessity, you know, I, I need to bring the vision to life. And that's where the drawing and, the, you know, the, the cartoons and everything comes into play. And um, particularly with, with this comic book, um, you know, my, my album Funk Lores is very storytelling based. And I had... Um, two songs on there, one about the Super Psychic Kitty, the other one about the Mummified Pharaoh. And uh, yeah, so I, 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 I got the idea to make a comic, comic book for it, 16 page. And as soon as I get the idea in my head, it's like I can't get it out. And the only way to get it out, you know, to, to fight it, <laughs> is to actually just do it, you know. So, um, and, and I feel that it actually, in, in the long run, it, it helps the music too because it kind of puts into perspective that there's a bigger vision to what I'm doing and not just rapping and, and throwing stuff out there you know right and you do like the as he says there in your uh, liner notes in the, in the CD did you pack about how you do music editing and um, production music video so you do that and the animation and so how much how much work is it to do that to master animation um, it's a lot of work. I mean, it, it's very, it's, uh, I figured out a way for myself that makes sense for me, that's easy for me to, to do in terms of like steps, but it's all very time consuming. Um, it's a very, you know, tedious thing and especially frame by frame, right? Frame by frame. Right. Yep, exactly. I'm, I'm drawing everything, um, by hand for the most part, for the majority of what you see, I'm drawing it by hand on paper. And I'm scanning it and um, transferring it digitally, and then and that's where I'm making it come to life. But um, recently, in uh, my newest video that you'll see with the, the new narrative that I just put out with Opio, I'm uh, learning to do kind of like a collage art style, where, where I'm not just doing my own cartoons, but kind of, uh, you know, different, different images, you know, photos and, and things like that. Yeah. You mentioned Opio there and hieroglyphics and... Uh you know, oh, another thing too, like the Bay Area. Today, you mentioned to me a little earlier on this Friday, the 22nd of April, 2022, that you said it was a year ago today when Shock G passed away. Yep. Which is crazy. It's yeah. already one year, right? Yeah, I know. But, uh, and then you mentioned you were talking about opium. Earlier here, we were talking about hieroglyphics. Um, as an artist who is today, in this year, 2022, you've been doing it for a few years, but you're still a relatively new hip-hop artist. What is it like coming of age in the Bay Area with its history, its hip-hop history? And how important is it, like, the people like the hieroglyphics and Digital Underground and different crews who kind of laid down the, the groundwork here? For me, it's important. Um, maybe, maybe not for you know every every artist. You know, I know every everybody's got their own 
of mock-up of influences and what drives them and you know what where they get their inspiration from but for me it's very important um, because those cats have been uh, people like Digital Underground and of course Hieroglyphics they've they've been uh, influential on me and you know what what I'm doing so um, I'm I don't know, I guess, I guess even being younger too, um, kind of, I, 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 maybe I grew up past the, or I, I became a kid, you know, past the point where hip hop was this new thing. I was already a kid and it was just out. Um, so I never really experienced it as this, you know, phenomenon, like a cultural, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, revolution, um, to me it just was, but I, I remember very distinctly hearing, uh, Freaks of the industry as a little kid and, and and as a little kid, you know, like recognize where did wow. you hear it? I remember hearing it on the radio I would listen to it on the radio on like 106.1 KML or wild 94.9 And you liked it. Yeah, I did and, and I remember being like a little just you know a young kid and, and and Distinctly liking it and knowing that they were talking adult content and at the same time hearing that there was something like really you know i could i could get that there was something edgy beyond even just the adult uh content of it you know i knew that it was something like wow this is different this is it's not it's not just the fact that they're talking about sex you know there's there's more art going into it and i could pick up on it and also if i can interrupt it's pure p-funk influenced and meanwhile super psychic kitty that track on the album which is sort of taking the uh Half of the title of the comic book on on Funk Lore, the track, that is like straight up P Funk. Right, it's very funky. That's very part, funky. That's very one of the funkier funk. songs yeah. in the album. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so a fun you, song. again, this is sort of like connecting the dots and it's continuing a tradition, right? Yeah, no, and that and that's uh, I guess you know the more I started finding my voice and, and deciding that this was what I wanted to do and, and what I wanted to become. Um, going back and really uh, put in the perspective all, all the, you know, really knowing my roots and, and um, you know, knowing that what I was doing wasn't something that was, I was picking up, you know, the, I was picking up the, uh, carrying, carrying the baton, right? You right. Know, so really, just really recognizing that. And, um, and from there, you know, we, you know, we talk about going back into, you know, the, like, you know the um, cats who put it down the innovators in hip-hop but then like you mentioned you know taking it back to the origins of, of uh, you know black music traditionally in, right. in America which is very important to me um, so so it starts with hip-hop but then hip-hop brought me really straight to the roots of that and, and it's so important it's devastating but also Zumbi yeah was it like somebody who I would say that you're carrying on the tradition of and who was an influence in, in some different capacity towards you right oh definitely I mean um, those um, when I started getting the idea that I could perform you know, or even that that was a thing. Some of the first shows that I was going and, and watching and, and seeing Cats live were Zion I and the Grouch. I remember seeing Zion I and the Grouch live in Sac State. They did a free show in like 2006, you know. <laughs> and those were some of my first shows going to before I'm 21. You wow. Know? So, wow. yeah, definitely. So that's early influence right there. That's, definitely, yeah. definitely, and and, and um, no, then and, and just seeing the way they grinded, you know, the way the way they hustled and the way they connected to their audience, you know, like not just not just getting on the stage like the great stars they were, but actually kicking it and and you know mingling with people mm -hmm. and taking the time to just be real with people, you know, like that always had a uh, great impression on me as well as, as the kind of person I wanted to carry myself to be, you know? Well, speaking of which, <clears throat> you have reached out and collaborated with many different artists in the Bay Area. Actually, your new album doesn't have as, quite as many collaborations as you have been, from my, from my perspective, known to do. So you want to kind of do a listing of uh, some of the artists that you've gotten to work with in the Bay Area? that people should know, like sort of a shout-out list? Sure. Uh, I mean, I've, I've gotten to work with so Including, many... Including, and sorry to interrupt, but a lot of great female artists, too. Yeah, I've worked with a lot of great female artists. I'll, I'll, I'll just, since we're there on, on the female artists, I'll list them. I've worked with Emerald Brown, Kayla Love, Lil MC, 1AM. Um, all very talented. Yeah, the, and these are, these are all who I would consider to be, like, my peers. These are my contemporaries right now doing, you know, on, on, the, on the same leg right now where I'm at with it. 
Um, and then outside of that, I worked with a lot of really talented producers. Um, like on my album, I have uh, beats from Architect, who you know he's he's you know a pioneer, somebody who's been putting it down. Homeless Derelicts, also um, Bi Electric, who also goes by Big Sean from Board Stiff, San Francisco. Um, I've worked with um, Mr. Clean, who who did all the beats on Heroes of the Gold Rush. Um, a lot of people, and I've, and I've gotten to also have, I've done tracks with uh, uh, Deuce Eclipse. I've had, oh, yeah. I've, I've, got, um, I've got some stuff with, I've, I've done stuff with Equipto, with El Ronius, with Michael Marshall, all that stuff wow. is, is, is out there. And, and that's stuff that I did maybe like almost 10 years ago, <laughs> you know, when I was, you know, still in my early 20s, you know. Um, and worked with a lot of, um, yeah, other, other great MCs in, in, in my, um, where, where I'm at with it, you know, in my, my, where I'm at, you know, um, Unlearn the World, there's another, another cat who, I, who I've done a lot of work with, and I've also worked with cats outside of the Bay as well, you know, I've been to New Mexico, worked with cats out there, been up to Canada, Japan, so, yeah. <laughs> And for you, upcoming shows, you got one in Oakland in June, correct? June 11th at 7th West in Oakland, yep. It's gonna and who be else is on that show? show? I got um, Nan Fierro, who is a battle rapper from King of the Dot. Um, also just a really talented MC on his own, solo artist. Um, Isaiah Mostafa, who is a talented young dude from Berkeley. Um, R&B singer and then also a really good rapper. Um, 1 a.m. will be performing. Um, Curbside, which is Professor Gable and Scythe 4, are they're going to be talented people there. Yep, very talented group right there. Um, who else? Uh, Mr. Clean is hosting. Um, Bi Electric will be in the house. He's going to be doing a beat set as well as my boy Celador. He's doing a beat set, and and Celador also has beats on uh, Funk Lore as well. And I'm having a flashback in my head. And uh, it's to Mr. Clean on one of your album covers. Don't you have a graphic of him? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He's um, it, it's it's for the same album I did with uh, Three Doors for. That's what know? it is, right? Yeah, he's he did uh, Heroes of the Gold Rush. That's right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then, okay, for people to find the new album that just dropped today, it's on what? All streaming services? It's on all streaming services. So whatever you listen to your music on, it's it's on there. Whether it's Spotify, Bandcamp. Um, YouTube, Apple Music, Amazon, and, and then and then again. And more importantly, the comic book. People yeah. want to get this. They need the hard copy of this. Yeah. Where do people get the comic book? Well, they get it directly from me, but they can also get it on Bandcamp or through my website. Which How much is, is it, uh, by the way? It's uh, well, I'm selling the comic book together with the CD for forty. So they 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 come together. Forty. It's a collectible. Yep. yep they come together. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much, right Senor on. Gigio. Thank you.